So I'm going to we're not, I'll, I'm going to pause and ask you to review things. So if you have someone to talk to. So we got data for high and low temperatures in January for random sample 50 cities. So we're going to use technology to complete A through D. <clears throat> okay, so what, are, what, are, what is the variable or variables in this situation? So all semester long we've dealt with variables, so we should know what variables are. What... Is there one or two variables, and what is it, or what are they? Okay, temperatures. What do you guys think of that? Is that the variable, temperatures? Mm, well, kind of. What's that? How many, how many variables are there in this problem? One or two? Okay, so then when you said temperatures, what do you mean? Do you mean that both of them are temperatures, or one of them's temperature and one's something else? Or So it's not very specific. If there's two variables, then just to say temperatures is not specific enough. What's that? Right, so one variable is high temperatures, high temperatures. Another variable is low temperatures, and that's what we're going to hold up against each other and see are they, does one predict the other, right? We're talking about independence or dependence of variables, right? So does one predict another? We saw a chi-square test for doing that, and now we're looking at um, linear regression, linear regression. So does one predict the other in a linear way, in a linear way? Okay, so here we go. So this is going to give us the table, highs and low temperatures, and then here I can do, get to stat crunch from here. So there's stat crunch. Let's see what they're going to ask us here. Decide whether finding a regression line is reasonable, right? If so, do parts B through D. So for purposes of regression, let, let high be the explanatory variable and low be the response variable. And what was an explanatory variable again? Is that like the, the independent or the dependent? Explanatory. So if it's explanatory, it's explaining something else. So is that independent or dependent? Dependent. Independent, right? Response is then the response to this variable that's explaining. So that's the dependent variable. Explanatory is the x horizontal. It's the independent. And then response is the y. It responds to, it depends on x. Okay? So, uh, so we're going to use our our technology to see if if there's uh, is this reasonable to say that we could do a linear regression, right? So we're going to go to the stat crunch here, and we're going to do stat regression, simple linear, and our x variable that's explanatory. Was that high or low temperatures? High temperatures was explanatory. Okay, and then response was the low temperatures. And it's only showing up that way because the the columns are named that way in this particular stack crunch, right? It has it has no idea what the data is about. It's just that the, the columns have been named high and low, right? And then we want a fitted line plot. And that's it. Oops. So we're gonna compute. And so let's take a look here. So here's this number we were working on last time. R squared is 0.95. So where does that number come from and what does it mean? What, what's the implications of a number of 0.95? So where did it come from and what, what's the implication of the fact that the value is 0.95? So review. Have a discussion with the person next to you. We'll see what you come up with.
Okay, so a little bit longer. So, first of all, where did that number come from? Where did that number come from? The R squared number. Okay, SSR. Okay, so it came from SSR divided by SSE. And what the heck are those? SS what? T or E? T. T. Okay, so what is SSR? we got to know this. What does SSR, what does that number represent? Okay, so um, kind of everything has to do with how close it is to the line. So we want to be more specific. So SSR is specifically what? Naomi. Okay, so what's explained by regression? So yes, it, it's just, what's that? Okay, so maybe let's maybe let's review that. Okay, so what do we have? We've got the actual observed, this comes first. Data point comes first, right? And this is just one typical data point, so that's first. And then we have all the data points, and we can have the mean, the mean value for all the data points. That's one way to predict what, what y is. One way to predict what y is is just the mean. But if there's another variable involved, we want to know is... Are they, do they have a linear correlation so that a better way to predict what the data is is th through a, a, a line, right? Through a linear model. Okay, so there's, <clears throat> there's the deviation from the model that's error. So like how far the data points away are from the model, if that, that, that's error, right? That's error. And then how far the mean is away from the model is deviation from um, the mod, uh, from the mean explained by regression. So just the regression. So this is from the model to the data points, you get, that's error, right? That's error in, you know, how much error do we have? How far is the data away from the regression line? And that's when we sum up all the error, we get the number that's the SSE. Okay, but then there's how, 
you know, the better the better that the that the two variables form a line, the the higher the deviation that model will be away from the mean, right? So we said if it doesn't form a line, then the mean is the best the best predictor. But if it's forming a really a really good line, then then we don't want to use the mean, and this deviation will be greater. This is called the SSR. So the SSR, the bigger the SSR is, it's like the more, the more a line is fitting the two variables rather than uh, apart from just the mean of the Y variable. And then the SST is what? Where does SST come into this? It's that's is the total deviation from the data to the mean. The total deviation from all the data points to the mean. So if that total deviation is mostly error, then we don't expect a good uh, a, a good line, right? If that deviation is mostly due to the regression line, then, we, then we're going to expect that the, the data points are going to fall close to that line. Okay, and so then what will SSR over SST give? So ours was 0.95, so what is the implications of that 0.95? Low error. She said low error, that's a good way to predict. So one says to say is that's low error, right? It's like 5% error, because the rest the rest of it would be error. So this is 5% due to error, 5% deviation due to error. 95% of the deviation is due to the data being on, on, aligned, right, being, being aligned. So what does that mean for the regression? Is, uh, is this a good situation to consider a best fit line? Is this a good situation to, just moderately good or very good? It's a very good situation to take the data and make a line out of it and use the line to predict. And so now let's see the graph of that. So what I, I just realized last night. So this is all the numerical data, the first screen that comes up when you do the regression. If you hit this arrow here to the right, you get the graph. So now look at look at the, does this does this uh, go along with our conclusion? The fact that we got a point. So what do you wh how do you see the fact that r squared is 0.95 here? How do you see the fact that r squared is 0.95 here? Most of the data points are clustered around the line, except for a very few at the top. Okay. Yeah, and so you're exactly right, but it's kind of the other way around. What comes first, the data points or the line? What comes first? Data points, data points comes first, right? So, so yeah. So when when we form a best fit line of the data, the or what should we say? So the data is very um, much in a linear uh, uh, has has a linear trend, right? Has, it's very close to having a linear trend. That's what we're saying. And so, as a result, then like what you said is true, that the data points then are close to the line. And that's why we have such a high value of r squared, 0.95. Okay, so let's go back to the question. <clears throat> Which was? Did I lose it? No, here it is. Okay. So it says... Decide whether finding a regression line is reasonable. Is it reasonable? Yes. More than reasonable, right? It's a very appropriate. Okay. There is no clear pattern, a clear nonlinear pattern, a linear pattern. Definitely what we'll say. There's definitely a linear pattern. So it is reasonable. Definitely. High value of R squared. Okay. And we got how many decimal places? Three. Anyone copy down what, what it was? So then you can go, the left arrow takes you back. 
Determine the percentage of variation in the observed values of the response variable explained by the regression. So what percentage of variation is explained by regression as opposed to error? That's exactly what this number tells us, right? And about 5% is due to error, right? A little bit less than 5%. But this is the percent of variation due to regression. State how useful the regression equation appears to be for making predictions. Very useful. Why? Because it's a very high R-squared value and because that data was had a very strong linear trend. Question is complete. Okay, and then going back to the um, this, so remember that your SSR is down here at this bottom column, SS, right? <coughs> model, so re, um, regression is a model. So that the line that we made is a model. So that model and the model is the regression line. So this is the SSR, this is the SSE, E for error, SST. And then, so we know that the SSR, the, the 16,000 number divided by the 17,000 is what gave us the R squared. Okay, any questions on that review stuff? <clears throat> okay, and so let's go on and keep going. We got one more section. which is called correlation, correlation. So and that's where we're going with this. So forming a linear regression is um, suggesting something that we call correlation, correlation. How are the two variables correlated? How strongly are they correlated? Okay, so here's this number R. And again, it's called the linear co Correlation coefficient. R squared was the coefficient of determination. I think I'm, I may have stated that wrong last time, but R squared is the coefficient of determination. What is it determining? It's determining how reasonable it is to use a regression line, right? How it's determining how reasonable it is. We, we just had a coefficient of determination of 0.95, which is so it's very reasonable or appropriate to use a regression line. Then R is the linear correlation coefficient. And this, uh, yeah, so, so uh, both of these are ways to do it. And, uh, both of them very complicated, long, tedious process of algebra that we're going to let the computer do for us. Okay? So, but what do you notice? It's R, and this was R squared, and that's exactly the mathematical relationship of them. What would you do to the coefficient of determination then to get the linear correlation coefficient? What would you do? Square it? Square root, square root right? So it's the square root of then the coefficient of determination is the linear correlation coefficient. This is the same R here, that's the R squared, okay? But now R can be positive or negative. R squared will always be between zero and one because it's a fraction, it's like a ratio, right? But this can be, this can vary between negative one and one. We'll talk about what that means. But R squared is that we we set up a fraction, right? We set up a fraction of the SSR and the SST. Those are all positive numbers, so we're going to get a, a positive fraction for R squared. But R could be between negative one and one. <coughs> okay, so here's some different um, graphs, and so. If the data all falls exactly on a linear trend, so exactly on a linear trend, and it goes up, so for increasing x, you get increasing y, that's, 
That's R of positive 1. So this, this is R greater than 0. R greater than 0 are all these up top, which means they increase or decrease together. If x increases, y increases. All right, that's R greater than 0. So numbers between 0 and 1. <clears throat> the weaker the correlation, the lower the value. So you see the, how this is a much weaker correlation than this one. So this is R is 0.9. Similar to the example we just had, the data is very close to the, to the line. Strong linear trend, right? Strong linear trend. So this is a weak linear trend, but since it's still an upward trend, it has a positive R value. So this is R of 0.4. Your negative values of R, R4, kind of inverse relationships. If x increases, then what does y do? <coughs> Decreases. So now if x increases, y goes down. That's called an inverse or indirect in inverse relationship. This is a direct relationship and indirect. Okay? And so when r is negative 1, you have a perfect downward linear model. It's per the data falls perfectly on the model. All right? Here's r of negative 0.9. So Downward trend, very strong linear trend. Downward, not so strong linear trend would be, this is R of negative 0.4. So if there's no trend at all, so and that this is not slope, okay? This is not slope. So this, if all the points were exactly on the line like this, that would also be R as negative 1. Okay, so it's not the inclination. It has nothing to do with how steep or inclined the line is or it doesn't have to do R doesn't have to do with the rate of change it's just it's the value of it is um, the strength of the linear trend or how correlated the var variables are so again so now if this had a really really shallow downward trend just barely downward and all the data was close that would also be negative 0.9 so R is not rate of change or slope it's strength of linear trend or strength of correlation all right so what is r of zero here's an example of r of zero no 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 correlation right so then our best predictor of y would be what We don't care about it. So if we want to try to predict what y is, we're not going to pay attention to x, right? We're not going to pay attention. We're just going to look at the mean of y. We're just going to look at the mean. Something like this. y bar would be all or be our best guess at what a typical value would be. And we're not going to pay attention to x to try to predict y. <clears throat> okay? Okay, so let's do this on your sheet. Uh, per day, per day only. And I do want you to explain, okay? So you're going to um, read what the two variables are, and then you're not going to really do any number crunching, but you're going to think about those two variables in light of what we just talked about. Did I hand out sheets yet? No. Think about what we just talked about and think about these two variables and, and uh, predict what kind of, what sort of R value do you think you would get. And then in sentences, explain why. Look at that, perfect. Okay. What would you predict? And why?
Okay, one minute to go. That was supposed to make you panic and talk. Here's a hint. Here's a hint. You don't need this table to answer this question. You don't need this table at all to answer this question. So you really, it doesn't really matter. The numbers don't really matter here. You understand what's going on. That's a hint. If, X, if one increases, the other decreases. Yep, that's when they're negative. Okay, what do you think? These guys are saying close to zero. Yeah. Equal to zero. What do you think back there? But what sort of value would you expect for R? So what is R all about? What is it all about? So let's talk about explanations. Why are you saying 0 versus 0.6? What is R about? Correlation, which is about what? What is correlation about? Dependent or independent, or it's about predictability. It's about predictability. Can you use one variable to predict the other? Can you use one variable to predict the other? So what do you say? No. Darn it. I just missed out on a lot of high grades in my classes, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is that fair? No, of course. So, yeah, height no, it has no... Height would never explain, height as an explanatory variable would never explain test scores, right? Height would never explain test scores. Test scores are not dependent on height. So that's why I was trying to get your attention off the numbers, off the numbers. So what sort of value would you expect? Close to zero, close to zero. If it's not zero, then it's just some, something coincidental. If we had lots more data, you know, if we had 100 or 1,000, um, data uh, data pairs. What would we see? What kind of plot would we see? We had lots and lots of data. What would the plot look like? Dots everywhere, right? 
people with low, short people with low scores, tall people with high scores, tall people with low scores, short people with high scores, and everything in between. So R would be close to zero. Does it make sense? So uh, the, this regression is about, um, this value R is about predictability. How, to what strength does one explain or predict the other? Okay, questions on that? Does it make sense? Okay, so then there's this other thing, causation. Okay, so there's a difference between correlation and causation. So here is real data. And they took data and they, they took the two variables as sales of ice cream and shark attacks. <laughs> sales of ice cream and shark attacks. So when sales of ice cream go up, so do we have a, do we have, is there a, a correlation here between ice, ice cream sales and shark attacks? What would you guess for an R value here? What would you guess for an R value? Just guess. I'll give you some, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0 0.8? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0 0.8. What would be the, looking at this here? Okay, according to these, 0 0.8. All right, so 0 0.8 might be the best guess out of those four choices. Why? We have a pretty strong linear trend here. Okay, so ice cream sales is a good predictor, a good explainer of shark attacks frequency of shark attacks. Okay, so the different question is, does eating more ice cream cause more shark attacks? Do you see the difference? Does eat, does when people are eating more ice cream, does that cause more sharks to attack? They like, they, they, they can smell the, the sugar and the, the cream in the, in the blood, right? And so they, they attack more. Is that right? No, right? Do you see the difference between correlation and causation? Eating ice cream is not causing shark attacks, but there is a strong correlation there. There's a strong correlation between the two. They, it's predicting, but it's not causing. So why is it? Why is this? Why do we have this strong linear trend of ice cream sales and shark attacks? Because more sales tend to be more people, and if there's more people, there's more likelihood of shark attacks. Mm, not quite. Well, Yeah, so it's summertime, right? So in summertime, more people buy ice cream and there's more shark attacks. So yeah, it's about temperature and time of year is really what's causing each one of these. So summertime, temp higher temperatures cause higher ice cream sales and also cause higher shark attacks. But then when you take temperature out of it, shark attacks are not caused by ice cream sales. But <clears throat> correlated, absolutely. Shark attacks and ice cream sales have a high degree of correlation. Okay? All right, another good example. They found that from 1996 to 2000, um, when as uh, lem lemons imported from USA to Mexico increased, uh, highway fatalities went down. Like, and look at this. R squared is 0.97. R, is R positive or negative here? So let's find R. What is R, what is R here? What is the value of R? Find what the value of R is. Zero point nine eight. Agree? Negative. Negative, right? Negative zero point nine eight. Very strong correlation of imports from Mexico of lemons and total highway fatalities in the US, okay? Does importing more lemons cause fatalities to go down on the highway? Of course not, right? Of course not. This is just someone happened to hold these variables up against each other and, and see that very coincidentally, they had a high, high correlation, right? Fresh lemon uh, imports went up in this time frame. Highway fatalities went down for whatever reason, and they make it makes this nice linear graph with a very high negative correlation. But there's no causation involved at all. Importing more lemons does not cause 
fatalities on the highway to go down. Okay, so really important point. Because, because people will conclude causation all the time when it's not. So they'll, they'll say, oh, look, look at the trend. It's so, therefore, this one is causing the other one. And oftentimes that's not true. Make sense? Important point about the difference. Okay, so let's uh, let's try something here. Okay, so we gotta pick one that you don't have. So maybe one. Let's try one thirty-seven. Twenty, one twenty-three, one twenty-five. Okay, so one thirty-seven is the first one you don't have. So let's look at this one. Work as a student. Okay. So we got some data over here. For the data shown to the right, determine the linear correlation coefficient using two different answers from the formulas below. So we don't need, we don't need to do that. We're just going to uh, use StatCrunch to do it. And I'm going to show you how you get this value R from StatCrunch. It was always there. We just didn't pay attention to it. So if I click on this, open in StatCrunch. So we got our explanatory variable and our response variable. We go to regression. Do everything the same. Don't do anything different. Select your x variable. So they called the column x. They called the column y. And we just do a fitted line plot. Compute. OK, and so here's all that stuff we talked about before. Uh, SSR, SSE, SST. Here's r squared. And then here is r. Right above r squared is r. So how would you interpret this data? So the value of r is 0.834. So on your sheet, I want you to interpret with sentences. What does that tell you about the relationship of x and y? And everything you could you could conclude. So I'm looking for two things here. Two things you can conclude about the relationship of x and y. Thank you. 
Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just keep pressing on with the uh, with the my StatLab question, and it, you, it will probably address this question somehow. Okay. An integer or a decimal? Oh, we don't know this. So we'll just get it wrong. So I gotta make sure your homework doesn't have any of these. All right, what is R that we found? Point eight three four. So we got that from we don't care about this. This would be stuff along the way of computing it by hand, okay? So th this would be um, things you would have to do with that data set of those four, put, four ordered pairs in order to come up with value of R, okay? Or other computing things. So for the test, or... Yeah, you'll have to do it and it will count for a lot around your grade. Come on, you know me better than that. <laughs> So R is going to be the same thing. What is it? 834. Eight, three, okay, here we go. The value in part A is the same as. So they're, they're just testing your, uh, this question is testing your, the ability to, to compute that value two different ways doing the computations. We're going to use StatCrunch to do it all the, all the time. So unfortunately, there was nothing about interpretation. That was more about crunching. So let's see, what else? We need something more substantive. Okay. So this was 137, 39. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. 143, no. Here we go. That one you're going to do. So here's a good one. Okay. Something about, so this is weight in grams and, and quantity of emissions for plants. So the weight of the plant and then the quantity of volatile emissions are the two variables. So does weight, we're saying does weight, are we saying does weight explain the quantity of emissions or does quantity of emissions explain the weight? What are we saying? By setting up the variables this way. Does weight explain, is weight explanatory of quantity or is it predictive of quantity is weight um, predictive of quantity that's what we want to know and they showed us the data so let's um, let's answer that question just from as just just by looking at the the data here would you say that weight is predictive of quantity of emissions or not would you say yes or no He says yes. So if so, if you knew what the weight was, can you definitively say this is what the quantity of emissions is based on the data? Yes. 
If you did, would it be would it be more emissions for a greater weight or less emissions for a greater weight? What would you say? So if your life depended on it and you had to prick, you know, what the emissions were for a weight of 85. You'd say 21. So, so, it looks, so it sounds to me like you're saying there is a some type of trend. Uh, that that's the one data point, right? That's one data point that we got. So I see possibly an upward trend, but with with high correlation or low correlation, very low correlation, right? You can almost say that the best predictor would be what of of quantity, just the mean. You can. I mean, this is this is if if there's an upward trend, it has a very low R value. So let's let's see, let's see how it goes. All right. So we're gonna get the coefficient, interpret the value of r, and discuss the graphical interpretation. Um, and then we, we don't need to do that. So here we go. We're gonna go into StatCrunch and see about our prediction here. So we're gonna go stat, regression, simple linear, fitted line plot, compute. I didn't put my labels. X is weight. Y is quantity. Compute. Okay, so here we go. What is R? Is that what we? Was that what kind of we said? Upward trend. Right, so how do we know it's an upward trend? Positive, and very low correlation. Look at the R squared value. Remember, R squared goes from 0 to 1. Look at R squared. R squared is 0 0.06, meaning what percent of the deviation is due to error? What percent of the deviation is due to error? 6% due to error. Remember, this is the percent due to regression. So 94% of the variation from the data to the best fit line is due to error. So that's a low correlation. And that's why we're seeing a 0.25. Positive meaning upward, 0.25 meaning low, low correlation. So that was what we said. And so that value of R is 0.250. Three decimal places, yeah. Good, okay. There is. Weak positive linear association, good. Weak positive linear association. The given graph is? Consistent. Consistent with the interpretation we made because the Y values appear to? Increase. And the data points appear essentially scattered about a horizontal line. That would be zero, r equals zero. Clustered closely about the regression line, widely scattered about the regression line. This one. So this first choice is about the first choice that was on there. I don't know if you can, yeah. That first choice is about that you can only predict with the mean. That's what that's about, right? So the mean would be a horizontal line, and that would be your, the best predictor of the y variable. Okay, and So that would be r equals 0 when you use the mean to predict y. r squared, what was it? How many decimal places? 0 0.06. Anybody remember? 2. Three. Zero point 0.063. Question is complete. Okay. Is it making sense?
Anybody have a question? Okay, so I think we are. I think that is that oh, just a scratch. Go ahead. So R squared is what? It's the percent it's the the total error due to deviation from regression divided by the total. So that's indicating um, how how uh, strong the regression is. Because when that number's higher, the error is lower. So yeah, because it's SSR plus SSE equals the SST, right? So watch, if I divided everything by SST, so divide both sides by SST, this would be R squared plus this thing would equal what? One, right? So this is, so that's why this is the portion due to deviation due to the regression. And then what's the complement of that? We talked about complement early in the semester. All the rest is due to error. So when the R squared was 0 0.06, that's why I said the percent of deviation due to error was the 0.94 because it's the rest from one. Is that better? Okay, other questions? So let's see if there's one here at the end we can do. Last one. Volume in cubic feet and diameter at breast height in inches for 70 short leaf pines. Okay, two variables, right? So volume in cubic feet, diameter for 70. So a big data set, right? Decide whether to use a linear correlation coefficient as descriptive. So how are we going to do that? We're going to get the data and go to StackCrunch. So lots of trees here. And they're basically looking at volume and diameter of the tree, volume and diameter, and seeing if those are correlated. So let's just think about this. The volume of wood in the tree versus diameter. Would you expect that to be correlated? And if so, how? Positively or negatively? We're thinking about when the volume of the tree goes up, would you expect diameter to not be able to be predicted? Or would you expect diameter of the tree to go up or diameter to go down for higher volume? Yeah, you would think that, but who knows for these trees? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they just they stay the same diameter and just get taller and taller and taller, right? So that, so who knows? But yeah, you would think that if there was a, if there was a relationship, more volume of tree would mean bigger diameter of the tree. But pine trees is sometimes, you know, like it's like the short ones might have. The no, most full pines are like straight. Right, right. So let's let's see what really happens here. Interesting question. So what's our R? Our R is 0.944, R squared 0.89. So you guys were right. You guys were right. What does the graph look like? When the volume of the tree goes up, the diameter of the tree goes up. It makes logical sense. Strong correlation. Did anyone write those numbers down? That's right. Let's go back and write those down, and then we'll get it in there. Did I click on there? Oh, that's there. Okay. Yeah, so the, there's a left and right arrow that takes you back and forth here between the graph and the, the data, or the, the statistics. So we'll write this down. We've got R is 0.944. R squared is 0.891. 
And don't forget, we did this last week. It gives you the, the best fit lines. You can make actually make predictions for data that you don't have. What was that called? That was, and if it's outside of our data set, that's called extrapolation. So given a value of volume, you can plug it into your linear equation, and it will tell you what the predicted diameter would be. So don't forget about that. OK, so here we go. Is appropriate as a descriptive or not? Is appropriate. Because the data points appear to be scattered about a curve. Data points do not appear to be scattered about a curve. Data points do not appear to be or appear to be scattered about a line. Yep. <coughs> we had a high positive correlation. All right, the linear correlation coefficient is? Is that r or r squared? That's r, and it was? Or four. Strong or weak, negative or positive? Strong positive. 